morning, New Beginning Church, and our online family and friends. We ask that you would click that share button and start a watch party. We thank God for keeping us and bringing us to the month of August. It is only because of God's grace, his amazing grace, that we are still here. And I want to be, I want to thank God for his amazing grace. It is God's grace that saves us. It is God's grace and mercy that gives us a mind to seek him. So let us continue to trust and depend on God. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time to get to know Jesus and ask him to save your soul. Our scripture today is Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. And it reads, For God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. We're not saved by ourselves. It's only because of God. Our song this morning is Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
fast, Lord. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ, we come. God, we thank you for another day, another opportunity, another chance, Father God, to lift your name. We thank you, God, for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for molding us. We thank you for such a time as this, Father God, when we can stand, Father God, to your victory. Stand to represent you well. Stand, Father God, to be blessed by you yes. in such a way, Father God, that mean men will fall out with their ways. We pray today, Father God, that our broadcast, our worship service, our time with you today will be fruitful, yes. that men, women, boys, and girls will do those things that are pleasing in your sight, yes. that we will seek Jesus for all our answers, that we will walk with him and allow him to talk to us. Lord, bless our service on today. Bless me, Father God, as I deliver your word that old habits will be thrown away, old burdens will be rolled away, that our lives will be better than they were when we got started. Now, Lord, we ask you to touch every hearer. Bless every hearer, Father God, that they will confront you with their sins and that Jesus Christ will be a way maker out of no way. It's in the strong, mighty, and powerful name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in your living room. Praise Him in your car. Praise Him in your restroom. Praise God in your den. Praise God for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. God, we thank you again today for blessing us and keeping us. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sister Davis, for leading us in this great song that all of us are familiar with, Amazing Grace. And it was God's amazing grace that has kept us that has brought us and is continuing to keep us. We want to look at more of God's grace this morning. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 15. In the New Testament, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 9, verse number, verse number 15. Hebrews chapter 9. Verse number 15. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 15. When you found it, you will discover these words. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. I want to talk about the blood of the mediator. The blood of the mediator. The story is told, and I just kind of mixed it up the way it fits my cause. The story is told about a young man who had committed a crime. And in those days, this particular crime was unto death. And all of the people would gather in the town square to see the government <clears throat> execute those who have been in violation of their laws. The story is told that this young man was in violation of of the law, and the sentence was death. Stories told that when people gathered at the center 
of the town square. The bell had to ring in order for one to be put to death. You see the bell, they had a big bell in the center of the town square. Right next to that bell, they had a chopping block where they would kill those who were guilty of sin, guilty of stealing, guilty of lying. The sinners was dead. So you have it, this young man was guilty and he was guilty as charged. This young man was guilty and it was guilt. he was guilty for real. This young man was guilty of whatever the charge was. He was guilty and his sinners was death. He deserved to die. He deserved to, to be dead. He deserved to be murdered. He deserved to be killed because he was guilty. But one of his best friends decided one day, at the strike of 12, he knew that the bell would ring. He knew that once the bell rang, people from all over would gather in the town square. He knew that when the bell rang, the chopping block would come, come down across his friend's neck and kill him, blood gushing out. It would kill him dead. Yes, this young man was guilty. Yes, this young man deserved to die. Yes, this young man's sentence was death, but his friend had a plan. Because the truth of the matter is, if the judge did not hear the bell ring, he would have to put off the death sentence. If the judge did not hear the bell ring, he could not carry out the execution. This young man was guilty. He, he, he deserved to die. His sentence was death. But his friend climbed up in the bell an hour before the sentence began, an hour before the people gathered, an hour before the chopping block was to be let down on this man's life and cut his head off, leaving him to die. His friend climbed up in the bell, wrapped himself around the bell. And when he wrapped himself around the bell, the people couldn't hear the bell ring. This young man was a close friend. This young man was like a brother to him. This young man crawled up in the bell. And when the judge said, ring the bell, when the judge said, go ahead and kill him, when the judge said his sentence is death, when the judge said we need to carry out the execution, they realized that the bell had to ring. The bell had to make a sound. The bell had to go ding, ding, ding in order for the people to see him being put to death. This moment, this moment was a historic moment because never before had this happened to this bell. They pull the bell. The bell did ring. They pull the bell. The bell didn't ring. They pull the bell. The bell didn't ring. So the judge said, we've tried to pull the bell. There must be something wrong with the bell. Therefore, this young man is set free. This young man is no longer considered a harm to society. We will never bring his transgressions before him again. We will never have to judge him again. And when the people went to walk away, the young man, his friend that had crawled up in the bell, dropped down out of the bell. He was bloody. He was dead because he sacrificed himself for his friend. That's what Jesus did for us over 2,000 years ago. He sacrificed himself for his friends. When we look at Hebrews chapter 9, we find that the author is talking clearly about the great emancipator. The author is talking, making it very clear 
that Moses built the tabernacle. And this tabernacle was a precursor to Jesus Christ. In the tabernacle, Moses put particular colors in the tabernacle. He put red in the tabernacle. He put purple in the tabernacle. He put white in the tabernacle. He put blue in the tabernacle. There were specific colors that went into the tabernacle. And yes, he put gold in the tabernacle. Well, this tabernacle, this building, this house that Moses had put together was a precursor, was a forerunner to Jesus the Christ. You see, men used to gather in this tabernacle. And there was a curtain that, was, that shielded the people from the priests. The high priest would go behind the, the, the shelter. He would go behind the curtain. He would go behind the veil and make intercessions for all of Israel and all of Judah. God is speaking here today and he says to us today that I will not no longer, I will no longer require the high priest to go behind the veil. Because at the death of Jesus Christ, over 2,000 years ago, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. The veil was torn up. The veil was set aside. And therefore, we will find in verses number 12 through 14 that there is no more use for the blood of goats. There is no more use for the blood of calves. There is no more use for the blood of those what was rams and bulls. Because the great emancipator, the great mediator, Jesus the Christ himself has come on the scene now. And because Jesus is on the scene, the goats that was given for our redemption, the goats that were given for our deliverance, the bulls that were given for our transgressions are no longer needed today because that plan, that plan of salvation, that plan of deliverance is an obsolete plan. It is a plan that we don't have to worry about in the 21st century yes. because over 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ became our great emancipator. Jesus the Christ became our mediator mm -hmm. for all of mankind. Yes, the, the high priest would go in behind the great holy place. He would enter into the great holy place. And when he entered into the great holy place, he had bull and goats and rams, and, and he had those that were sacrificed for you and for me. And you think we looking at bloody Sunday, but it was a bloody day. It was a bloody time because, because the goats, the rams, and the bulls had been taken down and cut up. And because of them, then and only then was salvation made a part. Verse number 13 says, For if the blood of bulls and goats in the ashes of a heifer was sprinkled the unclean, was the sprinkling of the unclean, if it was sanctifying us, if it was the what cleansed us, then it cleansed us from the outside. Well, you know, the, the ashes of a heifer would be what was representative of all of us, of all of them at that time. The ashes were given of a heifer, so much so that whenever a person touched a dead corpse, whenever a person touched a dead corpse, then the ashes were to purify him. The ashes were to make him clean but no longer is it needed because that particular 
plan is now obsolete. That particular plan doesn't exist anymore. That particular plan has been done away with because the ashes of a heifer only cleanse men from the outside. It had nothing to do with man on the inside. It had a temporary cleansing. It was not an eternal cleansing. It was a temporary cleansing. So when they messed up again, they had to go through the whole process over and over again. So we need to understand that Jesus the Christ is the one who purifies us. He's the one who keeps us. In verse number 14, Hebrews chapter 9, 14, the author declares that we ought to know that if the blood of goats the blood of bulls was able to cleanse us. We ought to ask ourselves the question, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without a spot to God? Yes, Jesus Christ, the son of God. Jesus Christ, the one who gave us eternal life. Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son. This word begotten in John 3, 16, this word begotten means it's only unique, unique son. There is no one like this son. He is the only begotten son, the only unique son of Jesus the Christ. He says, how much more should the blood of Jesus Christ, how much more should the blood of Jesus Christ, who through eternal spirit offered himself, without a spot. Yes, his name is Jesus. He has not a spot. He has not a wrinkle. He came down to earth and he, he dwelled here among men and he did not sin at all. He did not have a spot. The question is today, how much more, how much more should the blood of Jesus be able to cleanse our conscience from our dead works to serve the living God. Amen. How much more this morning, saints, can, can the blood of Jesus, how much more can you getting to know Jesus make a difference in your life? How much more can, can the blood of Jesus cleanse us and can the blood of Jesus wipe our sins away? How much more can it cleanse our conscience? How much more can it cleanse us from our dead works? I want to tell you today, you may be looking good on Sunday, but you're carrying some dead works. <laughs> you, may, you may be polished during the week, but you have become victimized by dead works. <laughs> you may think that you're holy, and, and maybe you are, and you are a saint of God. But sooner or later, if you hadn't already done, you're going to have some dead works. You see, these dead works are offensive to God. These dead works are lying about you and lying about God. You see, God and man is in a great dilemma. God and man is in a great dispute. God and man is at odds with each other, as it was 2,000 years ago. God and man are at odds with each other, and God says he's right, and man says he's right. But it wasn't until Jesus the Christ, the great mediator, gave his blood that set things straight for you Amen. and set things straight for me. It's because of Jesus the Christ, the one who has blessed us, the one who has kept us. It's because of his blood that we now have him as a mediator. Yes, how much more does it bring us into contact with the living God? There's no God like our God. He is the great I am God. He is the God that goes about doing good. He is the God that keeps us. And he's the God that gives us even his wrath. Verse number 15 says, and for this reason. For what reason, preacher? For the reason that he just gave. It's for this reason. It is for this reason that the bulls, the goats, and the heifers no longer exist when it comes to purification. <laughs> The bulls, the goats, and the heifers has no place when it comes to redemption. 
The bulls, the goats, and the heifers are, are no longer a powerful force in this Christian walk for us. It is because Jesus is now on the scene. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 says, for, for this reason, Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 15, for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant. For this reason, what reason? Because the old plan was an insufficient plan. Yes. The old plan was an old covenant. The old plan was a plan that God allowed to go on, but God created a new plan. Yes. He created a new testament. He created a new covenant, and he did it through Jesus the Christ. By, by death, he, he killed him. By death, they slayed him. By death, they murdered him, Jesus the Christ. By what means? By means of death. Let me tell you, like that friend that was in the bed, the friend that sacrificed his life so his friend could live, so did Jesus over 2,000 years ago. He became our mediator. This word mediator means our go-between. This word mediator means someone who intervenes. This word mediator means that when you have two parties on two separate sides with two different opinions, you need a mediator to come together and set things straight. Yes, this word mediator, is, it means our reconciler. He reconciles man back to God. Angels couldn't do it. Moses couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it. David couldn't do it. Jacob couldn't do it. Joseph couldn't do it. It only takes Jesus, and Jesus is able to do it. Right. Finally, Jesus is our arbitrator. Our arbitrator. He's the one that hears the case, and he's the one that supports us. And he brought a bitter dispute between man and God to a happy end. He is our mediator. He redeemed us. He kept us. And he made us a new covenant. Mm -hmm. And he did it by means of death. You see, some things require death. I say to you today, if you haven't found anything by which you would die, <laughs> you lagging way behind. If you haven't found anything by which it's worth you not living, if you can't have it, then you're lagging way behind. So Jesus gave his life by death. And let me just stop here and say to you that you don't have to take your children's life. Jesus has already gave his life. You don't have to give your life. Jesus has already given his life. He died and he did it. He reconciled us by death for the redemption. For the redemption. This word redemption is ransom. This word redemption means that Jesus Paid the cost in full. This word redemption simply means that our salvation is the result of what Jesus did for us. I say to you, as I say to you very often, that when you're redeemed, you have been bought back with a price. When you're redeemed, you have been bought back with a price. And this price today is the blood of Jesus. Now, not only did, did Christ buy us back, he also brought us back. <laughs> yeah, devil, the devil was our master. The devil was who was holding us hostage. Amen. But through the blood of Jesus, through the death of Jesus on the cross, he redeemed us. He brought us back. He delivered us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did it through the redemption. And he redeemed us from something. Where did he redeem us from tribulation? He redeemed us from transgression. He, he redeemed us from our iniquities. He redeemed us from our sin. Yes. This word transgression means our offenses. He, he redeemed us from our offenses. He redeemed us from our violation of the law. Whenever one transgress, it means that he comes onto one's property without permission. It's the same word. We get the word trespassing. And when we transgress, we are trespassing. If we are saved, if we're born again, we are sinners. When we enter over into an area that God says don't touch, we are trespassers and we are transgressors. And I want to tell you the way of the transgressor is hard. 
And you may think that you're getting by. You may think that things going well for you, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you, when someone has broken the law, they're always looking over their shoulder. When, when someone is guilty, every time a police put on a siren, they, they ducking and they're dodging. The way of the transgressor is hard. How much more is the way of the transgression hard when it comes to godliness? We need to make sure that we stay with God. We need to make sure that we walk with God. We need to make sure that we no longer transgress under the law. The text says, the text says, he redeemed us. His redemption was given by way of his death. And so much so that under the new, the first, under the first covenant, that those who were called, those who may have received, those who have a, a promise will have not only a promise of their day and time, but have a promise eternal and an inheritance. Yes, God has promised us. If we just walk with Jesus, mm -hmm. if we just accept him as our savior, yes. uh, then we have eternal life. Then we have an inheritance on the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the blood of the mediator the blood of Jesus Christ himself, the blood of the Son of God. He has given himself for us over 2,000 years ago. Yes, he did. It was on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave his life for you, and he gave his life for me. It was on a skull hill shaped like a man's head. It, it was on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, my Lord and your God, gave his life for us. He died on Calvary that day. He died until the S-O-N shined so well until the S-U-N couldn't shine. He died until the earth responded in like an epileptic fit, began to shake and rock like a drunken man. He died on a skull hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago for your sins and my sin. He died, I tell you, until it became dark. It became midnight at midday. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. He died until one centurion soldier cried out, surely this must be the son of God. He died, I tell you, to one thief decided that, hey, when you get into your kingdom, I want you to remember me. He died until one man declared, I give up my transgressions. I follow you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, on Calvary, there were three being crucified. And when they were being crucified, there was one man who declared, if you save so many others, why don't you save yourself? But there was another one on the other side that cried, hey, Lord, have mercy. And Jesus said unto him, this day you will be with me in paradise. He died over 2,000 years ago. He gave up the ghost over 2,000 years ago. He died for you and he died for me. After Jesus died, they poked him in the side. Out came blood for our redemption. Let me tell you, if you want to be turned around, if you want to give up your transgression, you need to try Jesus. He shed his blood for you. He died for you over 2,000 years ago. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my God. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Well, they took him off the cross. They laid him in a barbed tomb. Jesus had already promised them, if you take down this body, if you destroy this body, in three days it will raise up again. If you destroy this temple, in three days it will be raised again. Yeah, the soldiers were guarding the, guarding the tomb. They laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. They laid the dead body of Jesus. He was all the way dead. He wasn't going to be dead. He wasn't in a coma. He was all the way dead. He died over two thousand years ago. They laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb, an unused tomb. They laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. And Jesus said, I'll rise in three days. Men guarded the tomb. Men stood by the tomb. But one of these days, Jesus got up with all power early on a Sunday morning. He died on Friday, lived in the grave, died and laid in the grave on Saturday. But early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus that rose early in the morning is on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. Amen. 
Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for the emancipator. Thank God for the mediator. Thank God for the one who keeps us. And he blesses us. There may be somebody here today who, who don't know Jesus, as we have stated here today, who have not trusted him in the deliverance from your sin. There may be somebody today who are listening to me who don't believe and did not believe before this message that Jesus' blood keeps us and washes us. There's no more need for ram. There's no more need for bulls. There's no more need for half us to die. Jesus died. And if you believe the story today, you can be saved yeah. just as you are. Yeah, I know you're saying, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know what you've done. I know that Jesus is the mediator. He's given his blood for you. He stood in your place. He, he has given his life when you should have been killed. Jesus is the one who mediates between us yes. and God. I say to you today, the door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to know Jesus just as you are. Don't wait till next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. You can come to Jesus today. You can come to him over the air. You can come to him in your living room. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Wouldn't you like to get to know Jesus? The text declares that we have a, an inheritance, an eternal inheritance. Eternal means from now on. Eternal means never stopping. Eternal means forever. It says we have an inheritance. It means that we are an heir to whatever blessings God has for us. We are an heir. We have an inheritance. We have something left because of Jesus' death. As people make out their wills, they leave inheritance for other people. Those are great things to do. But it doesn't compare to the inheritance that Jesus has laid up for us. You see, the, the ashes of, of the heifers was a temporary cleansing. And it was an external cleansing. But Jesus the Christ died for us. And Jesus the Christ has become our mediator. He's, he's become our emancipator. He's become our deliverer. He's become our reconciler. Back to God. If you can just trust this story today, this is your moment. Just get to know Jesus. He can make it right when others can. The good thing about knowing Jesus is you can engage in the inheritance. When you die, you can go to heaven. You know, hell was made for somebody, but, but you, but you, when you die, you can go to heaven. Jesus has made a way out of no way for us. All you have to do is believe the story that Jesus, the Son of God, died on a skull hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he got up with all power, all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Wouldn't you like to know Jesus? The one who gave his life. The one who died for you. The one who gave his blood for you. Wouldn't you like to know him? You can get to know him today. Just join me in this simple prayer and invite him into your life. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for, for receiving Jesus as your Savior. And if you received him, welcome to the family of faith. Welcome to the family of God. God is pleased. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Now you are on your way to heaven. You need to grow in faith. You need to study your word. You need to be a part of a good Bible teaching church. I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus the Christ is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church, you can do so by inboxing me. I inbox some of the members who are sharing this watch party and let them know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We will welcome you. We'll be glad to have you and we will rejoice with you. At the New Beginning Church, Jesus is the captain. At the New Beginning Church, Jesus is the center of attention. At the New Beginning Church, Jesus is the main attraction. We'd like to have you as a member of the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for being a blessing and sharing with us on today. We're just so glad that you've shared with us. And we're so glad that you have been a part of our service on an ongoing basis. Thank you so much. Now it is offering time. Hallelujah. It is offering time. It is the time to give unto the Lord. It is the time to give unto the Lord. And in your giving, don't forget we have communion right after the offering. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. You can give by three means. First of all, you can give by way of our cash app. Our cash app is cash tag NBC souls. Cash tag NBC souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle, and our email for Zelle is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please, ma'am, please, sir, as you engage in offering giving, make sure you put your address on there. Make sure you put contact information there. Make sure we can get in touch with you and thank you for your offering. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our service. You can be a part of this service every Sunday at 1045 a.m. for our worship service. And prior to this service, we have Bible study every Sunday, Sunday school rather, every Sunday at 9 a.m. Join us by way of Sunday school. And on Wednesday night, we have Bible study at 7.20 p.m. every Sunday. So join us at, on Wednesday at 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Thank you again for giving. Thank you for being a part of our service. And thank you for being with us today. It is now time for us to partake in communion. It's time for us to give by way of communion. Give ourselves back to the Lord by way of communion. Go ahead and get your crackers out. Go ahead and get your drink out. And so we can celebrate what Jesus has done for us. Jesus says to us, as well as his disciples, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. We have chosen first Sunday and, and then special occasions to have our communion. And so today we have our communion and we're gonna take it before the Lord and ask the Lord to bless it and ask the Lord to be with us. We thank God for the privilege of celebrating by way of communion. And today we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. 
how he gave his life for us, how he was beat for us, how he died for us, how he rose from the dead for us. Thank God for the privilege of partaking in communion. But you are, what you want, want to do now is take your cracker or your, your bread, whatever represents the body of Christ for you today. And we want to pray over this body. Father God, we thank you now. Thank you for the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you for blessing him that he has blessed us. We thank you that he's our great mediator. We thank you that he shared his blood for us on Friday. That he gave his life for us. We ask you to bless the table. Bless the bread. Bless the cup. Bless the drink. That we would do all that we do. And thanks unto Jesus for being the one who paid our ransom over 2,000 years ago. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. So Jesus took his bread and he broke it. He blessed it. He passed it out to his disciples and said, eat ye all of it. I say to you this morning, eat ye all of it. And he took his cup, said, this represents the blood that I shed it for you. Jesus shed his blood for us over 2,000 years ago. And his blood has not lost its power. Said to his disciples, drink ye all of it. I say to you, drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. He is the awesome. He is the amazing. He is the only true God. He's given us another chance to honor him and be a blessing to others. Let me say to you today, go about doing good. Go about telling the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Go about believing the story that is Jesus' blood, who has made us whole, is no longer the blood of rams, and goats, and bulls, the ashes of heifers. It is the blood of Jesus that not only cleanses us on the outside, it also cleanses us on the inside. Not only does it cleanse us for a moment, Jesus' blood cleanses us for eternity, for now on. So if you receive Jesus Christ, you don't have to get in another line to receive the Holy Spirit or to receive Jesus Christ. For if you received him, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit came in all at one time. You need to allow God to activate your spirit and that you will walk for him and live for him. And you, you would tell other men about the goodness of Jesus. To our givers, thank you so much for giving to us. To our givers, thank you for being a part of this ministry. Whether you are a friend, whether you are a family member, whether you are a first-time giver, thank you so much for giving. We do not take it for granted that you are giving and supporting our ministry even as we broadcast from a remote location, even as we're not able to sit and worship together, you've been consistently giving. And to our members, thank you for giving to the New Beginning Church, and thank you for giving to your church through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Thank you for seeing the fact that your giving is not because we have the church doors open, but your giving is because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. And those who have a heart for God, those who love Jesus Christ, they will give regardless of the circumstances. So thank you for being an understanding church that keeps giving to the Lord. And if you're not giving, it's time for you to start. 
Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for Jesus, the great emancipator. We thank you for Jesus, the great mediator. We thank you for Jesus, the great <laughs> reconciler. Yeah. We thank you, Father, that he's paid the price. Yes, he's paid the ransom in full. Lord, we ask you to bless us that as we benefit for it, from it, that we will glorify the name of Jesus. It's in the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. At the New Beginning Church, we have a slogan that we say. We are uniting the church strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our service. Be blessed.